Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help, help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Monday, February 26, 2024. In New Zealand, a fire continues to spread in the Port Hills, impacting local residents. It's been ongoing for nearly two weeks. And in Tobago, a ship overturns, spilling oil into the sea and disrupting the local marine life will show you the cleanup efforts. In the new Earth, what exactly is Earth School? Listen up, because we're all enrolled, and we may not even know it. Plus, a look at a growing trend in retail that's reducing waste and saving people money. This is Kaylin Giff, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. In Christchurch, New Zealand, a fire is posing a risk to lives and property. UNN Field Messenger Jolene braves the fire to bring us this report. Hi there, this is Jolene, a field messenger from Christchurch in the South Island of New Zealand. Our port hills are on fire and houses are threatened and residents have been evacuated. This started on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. In 2017, almost the same day, the 13th of February, and in the same place, Christchurch experienced a similar fire, which left homes destroyed, a helicopter crashed, and hundreds were um, evacuated. This fire was believed to be deliberately started. Now, seven years later, we have, once again, a state of emergency, and from my back door, I can see the flames, and I can hear the firefighters and emergency vehicles continuously going past my place. Three emergency broadcasts were sent out to um, mobile phones with evacuation orders for those homes close to the fire. Dozens of firefighters and emergency workers have been working through the night and helicopters through the day. Efforts are now being ramped up for daylight hours. The helicopters have been collecting their water from the nearby quarry park, um, which is quite close to my house. Um, at the moment, it's still early hours and I can still see the smoke and flames and emergency lights on the hill. And for the first time, I can smell the fire, which may mean a change of wind. Today is forecast to be once again very hot and dry, as our conditions have been over the last few weeks. I'm focusing positive thoughts that the fire will be brought under control soon. Thank you for watching this UNN Field Messenger Report. Next, in Trinidad and Tobago, an oil spill is threatening the marine life and local fishing industry. UNN Field Messenger Sophia is at the scene reporting on the damages on the Atlantic shoreline. Hi, this is Sophia. I am a field messenger for United Network News, and I'm reporting from Tobago in the Southern Caribbean from Trinidad and Tobago. We had an oil spill from a belly up ship, you see it here, and I will show you the damage what it already did to our beautiful island with the oil coming out and as far where we are now, what is done to clean up. Here you can see the ship in full length. Its name is Gulf Stream. There is no registry number of the ship known as yet. The oil is still spilling out and reaches along the Atlantic coastline of Tobago, which is the windward side. The extent of the damage caused so far can be seen here. Pitch black sticky oil covering the sandy and rocky beaches on this side of the island. It shows the emergency and the need to action to stop the spill as soon as possible. TEMA, Tobago Emergency Management Agency, Agency, has called out for volunteers to clean up here in the coming days at this beach after a briefing and with special equipment. One volunteer was briefed that we are not just dealing here with oil but a mixture with diesel. 
which affects the lungs and the skin. This would explain why the area is blocked. We still can only hope that our rich marine and reef life is not too much affected. To bring you this report, I would like to thank Mr. Grant and my friend Joel Hart for assisting me with his drone footage. This is Sophia from United Network News from Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm signing off. Thank you for watching. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. For ideas and inspiration, we encourage you to join our new field messenger group on Telegram. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN and we're taking back the news. You've probably heard the phrase, learn something new every day. Well, when you are awake and aware of how the world really is, that phrase takes on whole new meaning. But are we learning something new or are we here to remember who we really are? Gary Kay calls this process Earth School. She has a popular YouTube channel that gives straight talk about spiritual truths, such as ascension, energy, timelines, manifestation, and the false matrix. All right, Carrie Kay is back with us and we're talking about the Earth School, Carrie. Now, you know, we all went to school, grade school, elementary school, I guess Earth School. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to Earth School, but we definitely are learning a lot right now, aren't we? <laughs> Whether we want to or not, we are learning. And there's a lot of people, Sunny, that say the same thing. And that is this Earth School, it's a tough class. You know, there's so much we've got to learn. And to a degree, that's correct. To a degree, yes, Earth is a school, but 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 there's another piece of the equation. Uh -huh. We didn't come here to learn. Because the moment we perceive that, the moment we say Earth is a school and we came here to learn, what is it that you are then insinuating? I don't know anything. In fact, mm. I'm a bit of a dummy because if I was clever and the smart kid at school, I would have gone to the Pleiades. <laughs> wouldn't accept me there because I must have failed that class and now I've come to the dummy school see that's where we go the moment we think that we're in school what we are then insinuating is we're a bit behind the rest of the classes and we got a lot of catching up to do the truth is this you came here to remember which is very different from you came here to learn the truth is you are already multidimensional. You're not going to become a 5D being. You're not going to become an enlightened being. You are already all of these things. But to access your multidimensionality, that remembering is what we actually came here for. So it's a reframing. I'm not saying we're not going to learn anything. We're going to learn everything here. But it's more of a remembering than a learning. 
Okay. And some of us seem to have more difficult lives than others. How do we explain that? Like, how, mm. how does that work? Sometimes it doesn't seem fair, right? <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying. Some, sometimes I can look at my own life, Sunny, and I think, what was I thinking? Why would I have elected to put this stuff into sure. one lifetime? Surely I would have spread it out a little bit, you know, and yeah. put a little bit there, a little bit there. The reason that we do this is not because we're overachievers. Well, maybe we are overachievers. Maybe that's exactly what this is about. We're burning off so much density, and some of us are quick studies, in other words, some of us are going to revert to our true nature almost instantly, and others of us need to bang our head against a brick wall to break down all of the ego. That's what the difficulty is all about. It's how much do we need to go through in order to surrender? Okay. The surrendering when we talk about that, you know, you'll hear those terminologies, oh, you've got to surrender. You're going through difficulty. Somebody's going to say to you, you've got to surrender. It's one of the most difficult things to do, though, because mm -hmm. intellectually, you know what surrender means. But emotionally, to surrender, what it really means is you've got to surrender the ego so that the true self can emerge. That's right. the all-knowing self. That's the remembering. So yeah. ultimately, those difficult lives are not punishment. They are what we knew we had to endure in order to step into the surrendering of all of the struggle, the surrendering. And, and how many times has life done that to you? And I know everybody listening, they're going to be going, oh, my God. <laughs> it's because of our stubbornness and the stubbornness of the ego that's been so entrenched and re-entrenched lifetime after lifetime after lifetime so that we get ourselves into this point of, okay, I'll stop fighting, I'll stop resisting, I'll stop pushing against life. Mm -hmm. We've got to bring ourselves into that place of, I don't have all the answers now. And that's a very vulnerable place to be. And the moment we let ourselves go in there, miracles happen. Right. But those difficult lives, they're not a punishment. Never think of them that way. The bravest. We did agree to this. We did agree 100%. to everything that we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. The bravest of the brave will elect to be where we are. And you know, Sunny, we come into such an amnesia in this lifetime, such a yeah. disconnect from everything we are as an infinite being. And all of those difficulties, they're letting go of the confusions and the distortions and the misunderstandings so that the infinite self, the true self, can come back online again. Mm. And we can also volunteer to do that. We can also willingly say right now to God, to the universe, I'm willing to grow without struggle. If struggle is absolutely the only way I'm going to do it, okay. But if there's another way, put your hand up. I'm willing. I'm willing to grow with ease because it's entirely possible. Right. Yes. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are raising their hand right now. <laughs> do, it. do it with me, baby. <laughs> Emotional strength is a powerful and vital aspect of our well-being, often reflected in our ability to cope with stress, overcome challenges, and maintain a positive outlook on life. It helps us understand our feelings, be strong, and have good relationships with ourselves and others. Let's explore how to cultivate and harness emotional strength, transforming obstacles into growth opportunities. Doing things like reading a good book or having heartfelt conversations with close friends can reduce anxiety and boost happiness. Having a positive attitude can help us see challenges more clearly, avoiding negative experiences and opening up space for creativity and effective problem solving. We should focus on things we can control and acknowledge that at times we cannot change how others think. Take a moment to appreciate the beauty around us that can lift our spirits and bring us joy. Having real face-to-face -face conversations with friends creates lasting memories than just sticking to online interactions. Being open to different ideas can help us learn and grow, broaden our horizons, and deepen our understanding of the world around us. By cultivating emotional strength, we can achieve a more balanced and fulfilling life. It is a continuous path that boosts our resilience and inspires others on their journey towards positive change and authenticity.
Reducing waste and saving money are becoming more important for people today. And one emerging trend is the growing popularity of wonky retail, the sale of less than perfect goods at a discount. Salvage stores are gaining in popularity, saving billions of dollars worth of food from landfills annually by selling items close to expiration or with packaging flaws at significantly lower prices. This extends beyond food as consumers find bargains on returned and surplus goods through online platforms. During holidays or events, shoppers can find bargains on gifts and decorations that might not look perfect, but still do the job, all at a reduced cost. Sustainability experts praise the wonky shopping movement for encouraging a shift in consumer mentality. Instead of always wanting new and perfect items, people are learning to love things that are perfectly imperfect. Beauty brands are also addressing wasteful practices by selling products with minor packaging issues without compromising the product's integrity. Through educational efforts, brands aim to build consumer trust, ensuring that the products, while externally imperfect, are safe and effective. The shift also encourages individuals to adopt sustainable household practices, conserving resources and protecting the environment. The wonky shopping trend represents a significant move towards sustainability with an added perk of affordability, proving that imperfections can be useful. The Nep Wildland Project in Sussex, England is attracting attention in wildlife conservation circles. Once a struggling farm, it is now a thriving nature reserve, showcasing the benefits of rewilding for birds, animals, and insects. In 2001, the owners of the 320-acre Nep estate decided to stop farming and allow the land to return to its natural state. This resulted in a remarkable increase in wildlife populations, including common and rare species that have found new homes there. The most notable success is the return of storks, breeding in England for the first time since 1460. This estate is now a hotspot for endangered UK birds and nightingales and turtle doves, as well as hosting all five British species of owls and many other native birds. The rewilded land also supports rare breed longhorn cattle, Tamworth pigs, deer, and wild horses. Their grazing habits contribute to the diverse and thriving ecosystem, while their movement disperses seeds and influences the growth of new plants. These rewilding efforts have resulted in environmental changes, such as improvements in soil health, flood mitigation, as well as water, air, and soil purification. NEP also serves as a learning and research center for conservation students, scientists, landowners, and farmers. Visitors can take mini safaris to observe and photograph rare species in their wild habitat and increase their knowledge about the natural world. The success of the NEP Wild Wildland Project demonstrates how, with time and patience, nature can restore overused and abused land to its wild state. We are United Network News. Every day, we release real stories from real people all over the world. Steel Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta. In Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Now, a look at regional stories around the world. A struggling China invests more and more money into Singapore, and this has some residents concerned as these new investments come with more crime. In Bangladesh, the people launch a social media campaign to show their issue with what they believe is too much influence from neighboring India.
It's called the India Out campaign. Companies in the UK are being outed for not paying employees the legal minimum wage. Will it deter other companies from doing the same thing? And US consumers are pushing back against higher prices, prompting major brands to rethink their pricing strategies. Singapore has become a major financial center, attracting a lot of investment from Chinese companies. However, residents have raised concerns about an uptick in illegal activities coinciding with the nation's record-breaking money laundering case involving 10 suspects of Chinese descent. Legal structures like the Variable Capital Company, designed to attract foreign investment, have reportedly been exploited for illicit purposes. Some critics say this trend, dubbed as Singapore washing, could have diplomatic and reputational impacts as Singapore navigates complex geopolitical tensions. Experts argue that international investments shouldn't single out China since companies from Europe, America, Japan, and Korea also establish regional bases in Singapore without equal scrutiny. Local authorities may fa face pressure to tighten regulations to curb these illegal activities, challenging Singapore's reputation for business-friendly policies. The anticipated Dior fashion show in Hong Kong has been indefinitely postponed. This event, part of the city's initiative to host mega events, was anticipated to draw nearly a thousand guests with costs projected at around $12.8 million. This, set this setback dampens the momentum gained from successful events like the Louis Vuitton show last November, which not only elevated Hong Kong's global stature, but also stimulated local economic activity. The postponement has implications for local businesses and the broader plan to rejuvenate Hong Kong's economy and international image. In Bangladesh, citizens have launched an India Out social media campaign because they're upset with what they see as undue influence from neighboring India on their country's political landscape. Hashtags like India Out and Boycott Indian Products are trending, leading to reported decline in sales of Indian goods in Bangladesh's major cities. The campaign emerged after allegations of India influenced the election outcomes in Bangladesh, dubbed farcical by some critics. Despite denials of interference from Indian officials, the call for a boycott persists, reflecting the frustration among the Bangladeshi population over perceived foreign intrusion into their electoral process. The long-term economic effects are uncertain, but the movement could impact industries such as tourism and entertainment. The Rothschild family has announced the passing of Jacob Rothschild, a member of the family's banking dynasty. He was 87 years old. Born in England during the 1936, at 1936, I should say, Rothschild started his career within the family's banking business N.M. Rothschild and Sons in 1963 and later established RIT Capital Partners. Rothschild played a key role in founding the J. Rothschild Assurance Group, which became the present day wealth management company located in London, known as St. James's Place. In 1961, he married Serena Mary Dunn, and in 2002, he was honored by the late Queen with the Order of Merit title. He served as a trustee for Britain's National Gallery in the late 80s, and he will be buried following Jewish traditions in a private ceremony exclusive to family members with plans to hold a memorial in the future for his legacy. And we will have more on this, of course, in today's World Situation Report. Greece is set to raise the investment threshold for its Golden Visa Program, a change that is already impacting the local real estate market and its residents. Introduced during Greece's economic downturn in 2013, the program allows foreign nationals to secure residency by investing in property. 
Rents have increased by 40% since 2018, and local residents find themselves priced out of the housing market. To curb this, officials plan to limit the number of visas granted by doubling the minimum investment to 800,000 euros, almost $866,000, in high demand areas like Athens and popular islands. This move is expected to mitigate residency-driven property inflation and preserve local resources strained by the short-term rental market. Critics argue instead of incremental changes, the program needs an overhaul to prioritize development and affordable housing in areas that require investment the most. Spain plans to implement a ban on certain domestic flights where a train journey of under two and a half hours serves as a viable alternative. This decision, part of the nation's 2050 climate action plan, will directly impact how residents travel within the country. Routes, particularly those to and from the capital of Madrid, are under scrutiny, although flights connected to international travel may be exempt. While the intention is to encourage the use of lower emission rail transportation, the move has stirred debate concerning its actual effectiveness and the potential inconvenience to travelers. Opposition parties argue that the ban will barely reduce overall emission levels while negatively impacting Spain's air transport industry. In Montpellier, a city in southern France, the introduction of free public transport is significantly impacting residents' lives. Funded by a wage tax from local businesses, the plan aims to improve environmental outcomes and aid economic growth. Employees describe a reduction in stress due to avoiding traffic jams and the convenience of shorter commutes. Businesses are recognizing the benefits too, with decisions to relocate for better access to transport links and commitment to sustainable expansion. However, critics highlight the uneven coverage of services, leaving some suburban areas underserved. Despite calls for more comprehensive transport routes, there are still concerns about the financial trade-offs of such free services, especially the expansion of public transport infrastructure. In the UK, more than 500 companies, including well-known well brands such as EasyJet, Greggs, and Hamleys, have been publicly named for failing to pay their employees the legal minimum wage. Collectively, these companies have left more than 172,000 workers underpaid by almost 16 million pounds, around $20 million. The affected workers have since been compensated, and these companies have faced penalties up to double the amount of underpaid wages. Employee compensation has come under scrutiny, with officials emphasizing the legal entitlement of the minimum wage and the consequences of non-compliance. The Low Pay Commission argues that this ensures fair competition and worker protection, especially during rising living costs. A government bulletin was released to help educate employers on national minimum wage laws. Also in the UK, families struggling with the cost of living crisis are facing further pressure from increasing infant formula prices. The Competition and Markets Authority, or CMA, has stepped in to investigate these price hikes after a report indicated a substantial 25% rise during the past two years. By opting for more affordable formulas, parents could potentially save more than 500 pounds, or around $630, in the baby's first year. The CMA's Review will examine specialized formulas and marketing practices to ensure parents have the necessary information to make economical choices. Dannon was recently agreed, has recently agreed to lower prices, which may provide some relief as the company represents a large share of the market. A detailed report is expected by September, which could lead to mandatory pricing disclosures by formula suppliers. Rental affordability has reached crisis levels in Australia, particularly impacting the low-income earners. Recent research indicates that 82% of the lowest-income earners 
are overwhelmed by housing costs, with many occupying rental homes that exceed 30% of their income. High income renters occupying more affordable housing intensify the scarcity for those in need. As a result, low income households are increasingly forced to, into informal living arrangements, often still facing unaffordable rent. Single individuals and single parents are particularly hit hard by the shortage of appropriate and reasonably priced housing. The researchers say private market solutions alone are insufficient to address this systemic failure and call for comprehensive policy reform to ensure suitable and stable housing for people of all incomes. In Kenya, indigenous languages face a growing threat of extinction with six languages already lost and 16 at serious risk. On International Mother Language Day, speakers voice concerns over the challenges of preserving local dialects, attributing the decline to the remnants of a colonial education system, favoring English and to urban migration trends. Nairobi research indicates that a significant portion of the population no longer speaks their parents' mother tongues at home. Despite efforts such as the Kenyan education policy advocating instruction in local languages up to grade three, implementation fails due to the lack of resources and qualified teachers. Parents worry that their children are missing out on valuable cultural connections and fear that English proficiency is wrongly associated with success, overshadowing the value of mother tongues. Experts urge the integration of indigenous languages into school curricula to prevent further endangerment and promote cultural preservation. In Cameroon, a growing number of citizens are seeking opportunities abroad, motivated by better employment conditions and higher wages. Despite national appeals to stay and contribute to the local economy, many are undeterred by the risks of emigration. Poor working conditions and lower salaries compared to the Western nations are significant factors driving this desire to leave. Cameroon currently deals with multiple humanitarian crises and hosts hundreds of thousands of refugees. Europe has tightened immigration, leading many Cameroonians to look toward North America. The US and Canada, particularly targeting Africans for Quebec, have seen increased interest as legal migration pathways. The high remittances sent home by African migrants highlight the vital role they play in supporting their families and contributing to the local economy from afar. In Ivory Coast, local cashew nut processors fear potential bankruptcy and have called on the government to reinforce a subsidy program crucial to the local industry's survival. Despite the nation's cashew nut growth, the overwhelming majority are sent abroad unprocessed due to fierce international competition. Local processors managing to process only 22% of Ivory Coast output in 2023 have seen several bankruptcies and now face a significant downturn in government secured raw nut supplies. The main concern for the community's livelihood as these conditions threaten numerous jobs. The government, while aiming to double local processing by 2026 with incentives, has reduced the guaranteed minimum price for farmers this season. This move indicates the government's inability to support the industry and the economic burden on farmers who earn less from their harvest, possibly worsening poverty levels amongst growers. Haiti, one of the leading importers of U.S. rice, faces a severe health threat from the grain's high levels of arsenic and cadmium. A recent study reveals these heavy metal concentrations are nearly double those of local Haitian rice, posing a significant threat to public health, especially among children. With Haitians consuming significantly more rice than Americans, about 85 kilograms, or about 187 pounds per person per year, the findings are particularly alarming. The dominance of U.S. rice results from past political decisions and subsidies that undermine Haiti's agricultural capabilities. 
The situation is aggravated by ongoing armed conflicts that hinder local farming and elevate food prices, contributing to a growing humanitarian crisis with significant portions of the population facing hunger. The study urges a reevaluation of U.S. export practices and calls for strengthening Haiti's agricultural sector and food safety standards. New research from the U.S. highlights a significant link between diet and increased levels of harmful forever chemicals in the blood. According to the study, foods such as tea, hot dogs, processed meats, and meals prepared outside the home including restaurants served french fries and pizza, are associated with higher PFA levels. These substances, known for their persistent nature and health risks, including cancer and hormonal disruptions, are often found in food packaging, contributing to dietary contamination. The study emphasizes the need to reconsider what is considered healthy food expanding the criteria to include potential chemical contamination. The research is among the first to examine a diet's role in sustaining PFA levels over time, pointing to the need for more in-depth investigation into food contamination sources to protect the public health. BuzzFeed, a major player in digital media, announced it will be laying off around 16% of its workforce. This decision is part of a broader restructuring plan, which includes the sale of complex networks to network for $108.6 million. That's a significant drop from its purchase price of $294 million. This strategic decision comes as BuzzFeed aims to streamline its operations, focusing on profitability and debt reduction. This move follows the closure of BuzzFeed's Pulitzer Prize-winning news operation last year, which also resulted in numerous job losses. The layoffs are set to be communicated to affected employees next Wednesday, marking a significant shift for the company as it reevaluates its strategy in a competitive market. Vice Media has announced plans to lay off hundreds of employees and will stop publishing on its vice.com website. This comes after the company previously valued at $5.7 billion in 2017 has declared bankruptcy last year, leading to its sale for $350 million. Additionally, Vice aims to sell its Refinery29 publishing business. The company's CEO cited the ongoing financial strain in the media industry, referencing closures and job cuts across both digital and legacy news outlets. He emphasized that the layoffs are part of Vice's strategy to reposition for future success, focusing more on social channels and alternative content distribution methods. Approximately 900 employees currently work for Vice, with those affected by the layoffs to be notified shortly. American consumers are increasingly rejecting higher prices, prompting major brands to rethink their pricing strategies. Struggling to cope with rising prices for food and household goods may have begun trading down to cheaper brands and seeking bargains more aggressively. This consumer shift comes as companies like Kraft Heinz and Unilever raised prices significantly in recent years, citing higher input costs from supply chain disruptions and geopolitical events. However, as the pandemic era savings diminish and credit card debt increases for lower income families, there is a noticeable consumer pushback against these price hikes. Major companies have reported declining sales volumes as a result of their pricing strategies, signaling a potential change in how businesses approach pricing and sales promotions moving forward. Fast food giant McDonald's and cereal manufacturer General Mills have already indicated plans to highlight lower priced items to attract cost conscious consumers. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. And that's also where you'll find our UNN meme of the day. 
a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all of our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. Well, there is no world situation report today, but here's a quick update from Kim on what's going on. The remaining black nobility families had a total of $980 trillion in an off-ledger bank called the Universal Trust. This money was being used to backstop the financial system and slow down the crash of the system. They had issued over 9.8 quadrillion in bonds as assets to various banks around the world for credit lines, which have kept governments limping along. Now this morning, Kim removed all of these bonds and the universal trust was pulled from the banking system and those bonds were removed. This is a massive call on all credit lines for Black Sun bag men, such as Soros and Berkshire Hathaway. As the fallout from this move is happening in real time, as of now, as of this broadcast, it is yet to be determined as to the final results of these actions. Numerous negotiations have been taking place between the silent circle and the remaining anti-silent circle members over the weekend. The pulling of the universal trust and of the bonds was a result of maleficent actions at play. It was also discovered that the Mormon church has been using private planes to spray chemtrails over the last few days. Now, as you know, the Mormon church has billions of dollars of fundings to facilitate that spraying. The private plans were owned by several private banks and companies known to be owned by the Mormon church, such as the Bank of Utah. This stash of chemtrails was found in Provo Peak in Utah this morning. Now that wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.